We're live. Good morning from Burnerville Baptist Church. I'm so glad to be here, and I want to tell you that I miss you being here for Sunday school. Our devotion this morning on our Sunday school lesson, which is entitled, Why the Resurrection Matters. And the point is, is that the res resurrection of Christ changes everything for the Christian, for the world, for the lost, for everyone. You know, among all the world religions, the resurrection of Jesus Christ stands unique to everything in this world. It's just not something we read in history. It's something we see that people witnessed. We can see that they witnessed in, in the words that we read in God's Word. And Easter Sunday, I have to tell you, is not about colored eggs. I didn't get a chance to speak on the resurrection last week. But it's not about bunnies, and it's not about spring break. It's about an empty tomb and a risen Christ. It's about a man that God sent to the earth, Emmanuel, God with us here on earth, who walked, who taught, and who did the complete will of God, who went to the cross, died, was in the tomb three days, and rose again. But I think it's important for us to understand the completion of all that. The importance of the resurrection is that the next step was that he was going to spend about 40 days teaching here on this earth, and people could see and touch and know that he was here. But after that 40 days, at the 40th day there about, there was the ascension. That's the completion of God's plan. That is where Jesus Christ is exalted and placed in his place of authority at the right hand of God. Everything all the way up to the point when he ascended signaled the end of his earthly ministry. You know, God sent his son into the world right there at Bethlehem. That was the beginning right there of his presence in the world to save the world. It was about us. But the son of God, Jesus Christ, returned to the right hand of the Father. All of these things signifies the success of Jesus Christ <coughs> of the work. All of it goes together. And by knowing that Jesus Christ chose to follow God's will all the way through, even to death, and was resurrected according to prophecy of the Old Testament, and then he was seen here on earth and taught after his resurrection, the final step was the ascension. Jesus came to accomplish what God sent him to accomplish. And he came and he did what God sent him to do. Jesus Christ did in fact, without question, accomplish everything that God sent him to do. And it was all about us. No question. So I submit to you that the ascension of Jesus Christ is of equal importance in everything that God had planned. I want you to, this morning, I want to direct your attention to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. We're going to read verses 14 through 16. This is Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father. In Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 14 starts out by saying, Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Note that word, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. People, we are in a time of need. 
There would be very few people in this world probably alive that could even think that they was close to a pandemic. And we are there. But God is still there. And God has placed Jesus Christ in all authority over everything between us and God. There is no way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. You know, as I said a while ago, Ascension Day comes 40 days after Easter on our calendars. It marks that occasion when Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, ascended to the Father in glory. W.H. Griffith Thomas, he wrote this in the Inter International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. He said, the ascension is not only a great fact of the New Testament, but a great factor in the life of Christ and Christians. And no complete view of Jesus Christ is possible unless the ascension and its consequences are included. So I started looking because I'm the kind of guy that likes to know, according to God's word, what does this mean? What does the ascension mean to believers according to God's word? In Hebrews chapter 8, it talks about, it speaks of an accomplished redemption. It says, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. If the Bible speaks of the Savior's high priestly work, in Hebrews 4.14 here, it said in our reading, seeing then that we have a great high priest, we have this great high priest, Jesus Christ, that is passed into the heavens. Jesus the Son of God. That's not hard to understand. Let us hold fast our profession. And in times like this, we need to continue to seek God through Christ and ask God to carry us through this. Ask God to use us to take care of one another. Ask God to find and show us the needs and to use us. You know, the Word of God speaks of the Lordship of Christ over the church. So many churches are still reaching out. So many food papers are reaching out. So much of the love of God through Jesus Christ is being displayed in some of our darkest times right now when people are out of work. We need to understand that it is Jesus Christ that God has placed as Lordship over the church. And we can read that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22. It says, And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Him over all things to the church, which the church is the body of Christ. <clears throat> God's word speaks of Jesus' in intercession for us right there with God. In 1 Timothy 2 and 5, it says, For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we need to seek Jesus Christ. We need to know and trust and, and continue to hold fast in our profession of the faith and our belief in Jesus Christ, that he is the one that's there looking out after us to the Father, he is the one that's there to intercede for us always and forever. You know, the Bible speaks of the coming of the Holy Spirit there at Pentecost over in Acts chapter 2 and verse 33. It says, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted. The very first thing they say in this is that Jesus Christ was put exactly where God wanted him to be because he did not lose his faith in God. He did not choose to not do God's will. He never ignored God's will. Even though he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thine be done. And he followed that path. He did the will of the Father. So therefore, being at the right hand of God exalted, that's exactly where Jesus is, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath sh hath shed forth this, which we now see and hear. 
The Bible speaks of the Lord's presence with us today. Everyone's heard of the Great Commission. But I like Matthew 28, verse 20. It clearly says that Jesus is still present with us today. Why? It said here, Jesus, these are his words. He said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now here it is. And lo, Jesus said, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. There's no more to it when he said amen. I am with you even unto the end of the world. Well, there's going to be an end to this world without question. It's plain in scripture. I want you to hear this. Because we can, according to God's word, look and expect that Jesus is going to return to this earth. He ascended, and he's going to descend at the command of his Father. He's not going to ignore the will of his Father. His Father will send him back to get those that believed on the name of Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead of Christ shall rise first. God sent his son back to get us. God's using Jesus Christ according to his plan. God knew we needed a savior and God knew every bit of the path that he had to walk. We need to learn of God's plan. And that's saying we need to learn of Jesus Christ and who he is. Jesus Christ is the utmost importance to God's plan above all. And God has given him all authority over the church, over the body of Christ. God has given him to even those who are lost. Those that have family members that may have got cancer, may have been in a horrible accident, may have got COVID-19, may have been through whatever disaster. He is still there for us, whether we are saved or not. Whether we have believed on the name of Jesus Christ or not, he is still there for us. So think of it. Jesus not only came to the earth in Bethlehem, but he and, and he not only died, but he, he rose from the grave in three days. And he ascended back to the Father. And Jesus Christ is still there to this day interceding for us directly with the Father. He's there for us. And he is coming here. He died to save us. But he also lives to keep us to take care of us if we'll just believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Everything about the plan of Jesus Christ from his birth to conception and his birth all the way to the point that he ascended into heaven was God's plan. And Jesus did exactly what God called him to do. And he's still doing that work today. Amen. That's how important it is. Brother Dewey, would you close us in a word of prayer, please? Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son that you sent. God, just to set that example before us, so we thank you. And then, God, you sent him to die on the cross for us so that we could have that freedom, Lord. We thank you so much for your son, for what you do for us, for what you give us. And Lord, I pray that you would just 